Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without the Hollywood budget. I'm your instructor, Chris Temple, and today we're going to be talking about green screens and more specifically, driving on the green screen. This is kind of a staple of every low budget filmmaker that whenever you have your actors driving, you shoot the thing on the green screen because you don't have a way to shoot it for real and you don't have a safe way to shoot it for real. So we resort to green screens to do it. So I want to show you some tips and techniques and tricks that I've learned over having done this in quite a few movies and uh, hopefully it'll just help take your green screens to the next level. So let's get rolling. Alrighty, so here we are back inside of Natron and as you can see I've already brought in my two pieces of footage that we'll be working with. We've got Ruby on the green screen inside of her car and we've got a background plate as well that we'll be dropping behind the saw. But starting with the green screen first, let's go and see a few things about how I shot this. First thing I did is I actually locked this off and that's because I didn't want to have to deal with any sort of tracking and things like that in the background. So we shot it on a tripod. I also had the passenger door open, which you can tell a little bit right here by seeing the red, but that's right because I know at the end of the day this will all be letterboxed off and you're not going to see that. It's going to look good. Now another thing that I did, because I don't like trying to key through glass, is I actually had her roll down her window here. Uh, and so that gave me a really good clean area of green without any reflections and such. And so what we're going to do is after we get a good key and we put the background behind it, we're actually going to go ahead and add our own glass with our own reflection of the interior of the car. And I'll show you how that works too. Now you can also notice that my green screen was not big enough to fill the entire usable frame. So we've got some edge here and we've got a little bit of an edge here. And so what we can do, because I shot this on a tripod, is we can just garbage mask that stuff out. In fact, let's go ahead and make our garbage mask now and then we've got it for when we need it later. So we're going to hit O for Roto as usual. And I'm going to come zoom in here a little bit. And I want to just give myself lots of room to work with here. So we're going to make this big. I'm going to pan down a little bit. And uh, make that just nice and, nice and big. We're not going to be afraid to get too close in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and start here at the corner. And just start kind of clicking through a little bit. Really trying to take my time to make this mask as good and as clean as possible. Okay. The idea being if I only have to do this once, then I don't have to do it again. And I like, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I definitely like to try to minimize the amount of work I have to do on something too. And we can go ahead and grab the handle and pull that in. So right now our roto is just like any other shot that we might be trying to roto. This is all behaving exactly the same way that you might expect it to. Okay. This is where it starts to get a little tricky because we can kind of lose it a bit here. So I just want to make sure I really do a good job of keeping that. Okay, that comes out like that. And then we can push this one back in. Come around this edge here. Maybe goes to there. Straighten it out. Okay, good. Down to that. I'm going to follow this all the way down to the vinyl seal. And that'll come over, zoom out, and then back into the top. So that's one done. Now I can also go ahead, if I want to, and just go ahead and do one right down here, and I think I will. So click back on our Bezier tool. And this is just gonna be one less thing that the keyer has to work on later. And the less I have to do with the key, the better off we are, and the better the key will actually be. Maybe like that, pull that in. You can feather these a little bit if you want to, that's fine. Pull that back down, and that one. All right, good. So we got that window done. Let's go ahead and do the front window. And you can see this one's gonna be made up of two pieces. And again, you can really see the difference here because here we have gla uh, no glass, and here we do have glass. And you can see the difference in the shades of green. So it'd be really difficult to try to key that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and garbage mask out the whole front window here. And I think that's a grand idea. Now on this line, you can see how this is faded and that's because of where the camera was located. So we get this feathered line and that's all right. What I can do is just go ahead and come in probably about almost to the edge, just where it starts to get thin. And then we can grab our little handles and feather that out a bit. And we can of course adjust all of our feathering and masking later on as the, the course goes. But right now this will just get started. And when you're dealing with these, I've learned too, you want to make sure that you keep them straight. You don't want any sort of weird overlap with that. 
back to the bezier. Let's go ahead and do this little triangle here. This is the most difficult one in the entire piece. Oh, man, that was so tough. All right. Now, later on, we are going to also be doing a, a cutout here on the mirror. I don't, I'm not going to worry about that right now. But what I do want to do is try to remove some of this excess from the window where she is. And so I know that she spins her head around real quick here, so her hair kind of flies forward a bit. And so we'll just find where it's the most forward, probably somewhere around here. And then we'll just be conservative with our roto, with our mask. And at the end of the day, we're only going to have to key that very small section. I'm going to, again, hold this tight to her hand. And then I'm going to cheat a little here, too. So now that I've hit the mirror, I'm going to go back to my hard edges here with this. And again, it's just it's less for the key to have to crunch. And the less you can crunch the key, the better you're going to be. <laughs> but ruined. Okay. So pull this. I actually thought that was pretty straight, and it turns out that it wasn't. So I may have to do two of these here with this one. That looks good. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm doing straight lines here, but I probably should be curving them, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, that's good there. And I'll pull it down to the seat and then come out to here, just like that. Good. Okay. Now you can see a little bit here as she's moving, the back of her headrest moves on this roto. So what I probably should do, let's see, we started with this one here. Where's the keyframe on that one? Keyframe on this one is down here in the middle at 45. So let's just go to the beginning and we'll adjust this just by sliding these forward a bit. Pull that one down. Okay, good. And let's see how it plays. That's good. Could probably come forward again or up. Maybe to there. Now I may have to change it back here. Let's see. I think we can get away with that. Again, select the mask. See where my keyframes are. Let's come here about 75. Adjust it again. Now, if there's a little bit of green that shows, that's fine. Because we are going to be keying it anyway. But again, we're just trying to make our life easier. There we go. So now you can see our roto line there moves a little bit. Let's go ahead and fix the front one right here. So at this frame, it's going to be right around here. And we'll go to 17. That looks good. A little off here. Go back. Still looking all right. Move forward a bit. 75. Yep, definitely needs some work. All right, and I think that'll work out okay. Now, actually, see how our hair shoots through the, the shot here? I can find a frame and hold it right there. That means we actually can't mask that, so I actually need to go ahead and delete that mask. We did all that work for nothing, but so you know what? Sometimes that's what happens. That's what I get for not analyzing the shot first. My bad. Okay, now I know it's been a long couple minutes getting to this point here, but it's good to just make sure that we've we've got that set up. Let's go ahead now and treat this almost like we did with the sky replacement. We're going to go ahead and add um, pick color and as well as a pick keyer. So here's our color. We're going to run that from here. I'm going to view it. Switch this to green. And we're going to play with these settings here in a little bit, okay? Next, come on in and add the actual keyer. We're going to run the C to the color. We're going to run the foreground to there. Let's view it. Now what I need to do is come into the actual pick, PIK, and change this to C green. And now we're getting somewhere here. This is looking like we're off to a good start. Now I'm purposely going to find a frame 
where we get some hair detail on her so we can make sure that that's all looking good. Come down here to screen mat. Let's go ahead and clip the black a little bit, just a little bit. I can also use use BG luminance and that helps clean up the key quite a bit. And we're looking all right to start with here. All right, let's go and jump back into the color and start playing with this here. I want to turn the size of this down. And you can see it starts bringing back some details here that we were starting to lose. And I got to watch this hole in her forehead too. And then we want to increase our darks. You can see that filled that in. Okay. And then another trick you can use a little bit sometimes too is the patch black level. If it looks like things are getting out of control. But I think we're okay without that right now. So let's turn that down. Now, again, I'm only looking at the edges of her hair. I'm not concerned about what's going on in the rest of the shot because we have our roto here that I'm going to run into my outside mask. And when I do that, you can see that cleans up the front window and it cleans up the back over here. So all I'm, and it cleaned up all the area inside of here. So all we're dealing with right now is her hair and this line along her hand and stuff too. And the hand looks fine. We have no issues with that. And the hair, that's actually looking fairly okay right now. Let's go ahead and composite this now on top of a background and just kind of go from there and start playing with this. So let's, we go ahead and add a merge. We're going A over B, B being our background. That's good. I want to transform this up a little bit. Moving up to there. It looks about right. And if I play this, because I actually had Alex here shoot this out of the passenger window of my truck as we were driving back from filming, I know that the road is going the wrong way. And I know you can't really see it as I flip through here, but let's just play a small section. And you can see that the road is actually moving from left to right and we need it going from right to left. So what we can do about that is go ahead and stop. And we'll come right after our log to linear and we're gonna insert a mirror node. And then we come up here and do a horizontal flop and that just flips our shot around backwards and makes that work out well. Let's go and raise the background up a little bit more. I like seeing this edge. This is a railroad track back there. I like seeing that. Now, we shot this with uncontrolled lighting inside of her car. And as such, the background really needs to be blown out at this point. So we need to go ahead and add some color correction to the background to make sure that it stands out uh, beyond everything else. And one of the easiest ways we can do that is by adding a grade node. I'm gonna press G and I'm gonna come down here to the multiply and we're gonna turn the multiply up. And you can see that just brightens out the background and overexposes it just enough that it looks actually pretty realistic right there. All right, let's go to the beginning and play our shot and see what we have. I'm going to zoom in particularly here so I can see her edges and see the hair because that's what I'm most concerned about. All right, if I just play that little section there, there's still a fair amount of flicker. So that tells me that we need to clean that up definitely more. What I'm really looking at on her hair is this section right here. So let's see if we can clean that flicker up. All right, so let's go ahead and bounce back over to our key. Now I know a lot of this I can fix with some de-spill, so really I just need to get the, the key itself looking pretty good here. Let's try turning down the size a bit more. I'm gonna actually go down to maybe 1.3. This might be a bit much, but we'll try it. Okay, and got our dark set to there. We'll go and patch the black in a little bit. And let's play that. That's looking better already. Let's go and view that back on top of the background. Now I'm not too worried about some of the green that we're seeing because I'm gonna run a despill on this here and that's gonna clean that right up. So really I just wanna make sure that the overall detail looks good, that it's not uh, moving and animating and then getting all those rolling edges and things that are telltale signs of really sloppy keys. And that's not too bad. Now I'm, I'm, you know, I'm scrutinizing this up close. I'm pixel peeping it right now. Let's go ahead and continue on with the shot. And if we need to, we can come back and fix that afterwards. Sometimes it, you can't judge it this early on. You got to get further along in the process and then come back and analyze things. So what I want to do is I'm going to run my despill on here first. And there's actually a despill node. 
You can see that just pulled all the green out instantly. It looks 10 million times better, so that's good. And it didn't just do it to her. It did it to the seat. It did it to the car. And so if I turn my despill off and on, so here's with it on, and here's with it off. Like, look at the steering wheel. Look at the, the tint here on the car. Of course, look at her hair. Look at the back of the seat. We just toggled that a few times. You can see just what a huge difference that makes to filling this up. All right, the next step would probably be to add a light wrap. And I love light wraps. I actually get carried away with these quite a bit. I'm going to use this alternate light wrap. This is, again, developed by a user of Natron rather than coming with the, the plugin itself. And we hook the background up here to our grade. And we get this nice, hazy, uh, heavenly look. And we definitely need to turn that down a little bit. So let's just go ahead and start backing this off a bit. Two's not too bad. It's not too bad through there. That actually looks, yeah, that could work. So I've dialed it back my blur warp and I turned back my dilate to two. Uh, blur background chooses how much of that is actually blurred to work with your shot. So you could like really blur it out like crazy if you wanted to. And then everything like just turns white because all your colors are smudging together. Or, whoops, wrong one. You could have like almost no blur whatsoever and it's just pure colors intermixing. And I like having it probably somewhere right around here. I find that works well for me. And again, just keep in mind as you're doing this, you're trying to replicate as if you shot this for real. How would this look if you actually shot the thing for real? All right, let's go ahead and add some glass back here to everything. Now, I could very easily go ahead and download some glass smudges off the internet, but I actually like making my own, and you can actually make something that's quite passable. I'm just going to move this up a little bit, again, to kind of keep my, my flow going here. Push this down. And we're going to put our glass right inside here. So let's just go ahead and press tab type noise and we're going to use SE noise. For now I'm just going to place it here and I'm going to view it and this is what we're working with already. And we can come in here and start turning the noise size down a bit. I find uh, turbulence actually does really well for making fake glass. And then you can play with the amount of octaves, increase them, decrease them, just kind of tweak this around a little bit here. We're just trying to add detail. Okay, that should work. Now I'm going to insert this back into my graph. And the way you can do it now, recently with a, a new version of Natron, I've actually used a few different versions in the making of this course. It used to be you could just drag and drop nodes anywhere into the graph and they would pop right in, but apparently it was too sensitive. And so if you use control, you can actually drop it back in now because by default it won't drop in. So I press and hold control and I can snap that into the middle of the graph at then. Let's go back to our merge. All right, and there is kind of a glassy substance behind her there. And it's not perfect yet, but we're definitely getting there. I'm going to turn down the mix on it a little, which is basically the transparency of the glass. Maybe somewhere around there. And yeah, that looks not too bad. Let's go ahead now and also add a reflection of Ruby to this too. So the reflection needs to again be inserted right here and what I want to do is I want to take this despilled and keyed version insert that in and mask it I just don't want to bring the light wrap with me so let's go ahead and add a merge okay I'm gonna hook my A up to the despilled version alright I then want to drop this one back into the chain down here and then I'm also going to add a transform node in between the two. So I'm going to hit T and I'm going to drag this into place right here. This is going to allow me to just move this up just a little bit like this and back. And what I'm really trying to focus on is getting her hand into this shot right here because that hand's going to be the key to making a good reflection. I could, if I wanted to, also use her face, but because her face has so much animation to it with the way she turns her head and flips her hair, it's probably not a good choice. So I'm going to use the hand instead to simulate a reflection. All right, just about like that. And then all we're going to do is add a roto. So I want to make sure I keep her hand and then probably fade that into here. Okay, come over. Keep a little bit of that steering wheel there. 
and over like that. Good. Now if we run that into the mask, all the extra stuff goes away and we're left with just this piece here. That's good. I can use my my merge to control the transparency on that. And if we just turn the transparency down, you can see it starts becoming transparent and starts looking a mo lot more like a reflection. Now you could, if you wanted to, turn this up and start using some of these different blending modes. Screen's a real popular one to do. And you can see that that works too for us. I also wanna go and take my mask while I'm thinking about it here and come into the shape. Let's just go and blur that a little bit just in case it starts to get seen a little bit. So we blur it to there, that's good. And okay, so let's view our final shot, which we are, let's get rid of our roto lines. And that's not looking too bad. We've now put her in there, we've added some virtual glass, we've got a little bit of a reflection that as she moves her hand, that's gonna animate around too. Now one of the last things I think we need to do before we really do a final scrutiny pass at this is we need to fix the mirror here. And that's because the reflection in the mirror is the same as the background. It looks like there's just a hole cut out and the background just moves straight through like there's a big hole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut that out and then we're gonna put a new piece of background behind it and uh, be able to make it flip-flopped back a different direction. And just by doing that, it's gonna create the illusion of a reflection. So here's what I mean by this. I'm gonna come off to the side here. This is where we're gonna build our mirror. And we're gonna add a merge. Now knowing that it's gonna be A over B, I wanna put my reflection over the top of my actual background behind the glass. Okay, so here's my glass and the reflections. I wanna put it behind those. So we're gonna go right here. All right, and then what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and grab my source and move it from this grade over to this merge. So now everything's kind of freaked out, right? We'll check this out. If we go ahead and we add another roto, we come in here close and we just draw a mask through where the mirror is. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure that it fills that area there and we hook that up. Again, masking A over B, we now have that over the top there. Now our key on the mirror is all sorts of jacked up. And so we can actually come through and probably just roto that out. So let's go ahead and do that as well too. We're gonna do that back up here with our garbage mats. So I'm gonna come in here, add a bezier. And the glorious thing about the steering wheel is even though the steering wheel would move, it actually doesn't move position because it's rotating over its own axis, which really helps us a lot here. There we go, that cleans that out. Good. Now I can just kind of scrub through, make sure I like the reflections that are being shown. And I don't think I'm seeing enough here of kind of the surrounding area. So what we can do is go ahead and just pump that up just a, sm a smidge. So we'll add a transform node, drop it in. And just maybe move this up a little. So you can see all we're doing is moving that reflection. I'm gonna go back to my roto. I'm gonna fix this up a little bit more. Maybe here. Back to our final. And let's see what we got. All right, and that's actually looking pretty good. And we've got a pretty decent key going on here. And again, I mean, obviously, to, if we're going to do this shot for real, we'd be better off, you know, doing it for real, getting a process dolly and, and all that kind of stuff, putting a car on there. But if you can't afford that and you're on a budget, setting up a green screen is not a bad way to go. And as you see, you actually get a fairly decent result out of it. And as long as you're keeping your shots nice and quick, you're not dwelling on them too long, come up with some in interesting angles. And above all, try to shoot it as if you were shooting it for real. Now, we kind of cheated a little by shooting it on the tripod from outside the car but it was the only way I could get, you know, as wide as I really wanted to go. But uh, it, it definitely does work. All right, I'd say that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean up the node graph here just a little bit and uh, before we end. So I'm going to use control, just kind of play with my dot nodes a little bit, 
trying to keep things as organized as I can. Goes to there. And so just to recap, we took our shot. We used pick to get a, a good green key out of that, which we had to tweak a little bit. We also had some garbage masks going on, and that got us our main keyed shot. We despilled it. We added a light wrap. And then with our background, we actually had to flip the shot. We created a mirror a image for the, the actual mirror that we saw in the shot. We overexposed it a little bit. We created our own layer of glass. And then we also created our own reflection on that glass. In fact, actually, the reflection should probably be somewhere over here like this. Reviewer off to the side. There we go. And so that's really what our final node graph looks like. And again, knowing that we go top to down, left to right, it's really easy to follow what we did. Now, I know that at first glance, this looks like a pretty complicated graph, but if you just take the time to you know, follow the arrows, it makes perfect sense what we've done. And as you can see, the result is actually pretty darn good. So that is the process for this. Go ahead and uh, experiment as well on your own. Find some other keying methods. There are plenty of them out there. What a lot of guys will try to do is they'll go ahead and use the green screen keyers to just create a mat and then run that into merges later on to actually uh, composite the shots together. So that's really all there is to, to doing these kind of keys and getting some cool action shots. I can't wait to see what you guys create with this, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.